Hey guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Imano. And I'm Bolu. Bolu, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. You've been escaping me, you've been dodging <laughs> me. One on one. I was supposed to meet and talk about all the wala your people are causing. My people. Okay, so just to be clear, <laughs> we're going to be talking about a very, very important issue today. Africa's crypto market, Africa's crypto industry, and how do we survive this crypto winter that has stayed long and long and long? And Bolu, what's going on? Every wait, before okay, continue. Every time it's always one issue or the other, one scam. One uh, somebody that <laughs> stole money from some innocent investors. Okay. Then uh, hold on for dear life. Okay. So what's going so, on? So so what happens is, you know, the crypto industry, blockchain, whatever you want to call it, is an emerging technology, right? So really? emerging technologies how when it's still imagine. Do okay. you know how old some technologies are? That are still imagined. Yes. There okay. are technologies that have been around since like the nineteen forties and they are still imagined technologies. So it's just 1940s. Yes. Okay. It's just the level at which the level of development mm. that so Bitcoin, crypto, they are still in this category. So, mm. you know, with things that are still developing, you tend to see a lot of, you know, that it's times like this that the mistakes will come out and then we'll be able to like fix these mistakes and, you know, make them better. My people are doing, they are doing yeah, well. They are well. Doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, interestingly, maybe I might not get the chance to drag Bully enough today because we have a special guest in the house and he's going to help us dissect everything that's going on in Africa's blockchain and cryptocurrency space. And uh, Mr. Ezekiel Ojewumi, I hope that I pronounce his name. Yes, correctly no. yeah so ezekiel is the marketing lead and marketing and communications lead at quidax one of africa's largest cryptocurrency exchanges so thank you for having us today thank you so much for bringing me on yeah yeah okay you are going to gang up, <laughs> <laughs> you are going to gang up now, for me but i'm I ready have, for you guys I have, you know i have someone to you know why you, you treat yeah someone to back me up <laughs> yeah, we're, we're here for that today yeah here yeah. for that it's okay it's okay so um before we go on, before we start talking about these whole issues on cryptocurrencies and mm. all of that, let's first pay homage to the Tech Point business team. Hi, I'm Abisala Adenoga, the head of business at Tech Point Africa. Did you know that you could present yourself as a reputable brand leader? Did you know that your business can get the limelight it deserves? Now you do. Using Tech Point Africa's marketing tools, we can put you in the faces of a large audience for brand awareness and thought leadership. To do this, Reach out to us by sending an email to business at techpoint.africa or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, yes, remember we have a very, very special guest in our midst today, the marketing lead at Quidax. I think I need to re-emphasize that they're one of the biggest crypto exchanges. So it's very big deal that we have them here today. And uh, yeah, Ezekiel, yes, this is the crypto winter. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also called the beer, beer run. The beer run. No, the beer run. Let's resolve beer for stock markets. Uh, well, it still, but, it still works. But, but interesting enough, yeah, mm. the the way the stock market works in terms of the terms that you use even in forex also applies in crypto as well so when the stock market is also in the, in the bear markets mm. crypto also is at, at this point is also in the bear markets as well mm. um so yeah you so also say that interesting okay see. we're going to come back to that back topic, in me right? already okay <laughs> <laughs> we're going to come back to that right paul first things first how is squidax holding up i mean we're seeing many blockchain companies web three companies laying off stuff yeah. there's coinbase there's um, OpenSea, blockchain.com, crypto.com, different countries, yeah. all in the Web3 space, and they are laying off staff this period. Yeah. So what's going, going on and how has Quidax been holding up? Okay, um, in terms of what's going on in the market is that what happens is obviously in, in times like this, it doesn't just happen in crypto, it happens across industries when your hits, maybe cash flow is affected, you need to reduce your costs. So what you see is they're trying to reduce number of people basically trying to reduce their cost. Um, but one of the things I think we have done at Quidax right from start is one, ensuring that we hire the right people at the right time. So we don't overhire, we don't underhire. We hire at exactly the right time of people that we need at that point in time. So that has helped us to ensure that one, we don't have way too many people that we need at that point in time. Two, something else we told ourselves is when this started to happen was that we didn't want to um, 
it's 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 not a good time to be able to tell people, oh, you, mm. you have to go and find a new job because we can't continue that. Because one of the things that we had said was when we did our risk assessment was one of the key, what could affect us that was wanting overhearing. And we ensured that that was not a problem right from start. So, so going back to the second point was that we wanted to ensure that we wouldn't face this. So um, beyond looking at our cost, we said, what do we need to ensure that we are always not spending beyond whether it's on the people side, whether it's on the tech side or whether it's on the marketing side. So that was something that we had always ensured that we are within the cost that we need to spend. And most essentially, what builds every business is people. And this would be a bad time to tell people not just to go home, but a bad time for the business. Mm. Because we're not just building for six months from now or one year from now, we're building for five years from now. Mm. And if you have to tell our people, some of the people that we have today to go home, it doesn't just affect them, it affects us in terms of what we want to build, it affects our plans. So something we're supposed to build in one year will come end up becoming two years. So we said, okay, we don't want to um, tell anybody to go home. What we would do is, because we had already done a good job of ensuring that we had the right number of people. So it was just a matter of taking a look at our business structure and saying, what can we do and what can we change? And so we have everybody that we have still on the business mm -hmm. and ensure we hit our uh, KPIs for the products that we wanted to build in the time frame that we have. Mm, so talking about people, I know we're pretty companies. Uh, it's just an assumption, but I just assume that we're pretty companies spend a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bulu, am I wrong or right? Well, yeah, you're yeah, right. Use actually. your conscience. <laughs> yeah, right, actually. And it's true that I would, well, I've, I, I've not really seen the financials of, say, any mm -hmm. Web3 company. But before before we even go into um, Web3 companies and how much they spend, mm -hmm. and I think it's also essential to look at, you know, you, you know, you just asked the question about crypto winter. Yeah. And it's essential for us to look at, you know, it's not just the crypto space that is feeling this. Uh, you also see other financial markets feeling this, such as the stock exchange. So my question is, how how is it, how is it that at the same time that you see stock prices falling, crypto prices are also falling? Because it has always been a thing that, oh, when everything is going bad, Bitcoin to the rescue. Bitcoin is usually the savior. So why is it happening <laughs> at the same time? Ah, thank God it's a question. <laughs> no, it's not me. Okay. okay. Um, so why that is happening is a lot of people during the time when, during the COVID period, a lot of people were buying assets. They were staying at home. They were testing out stuff, experimenting with different assets. Uh, and in the past couple of years, it's been good times. With stock markets up, crypto prices going up, Bitcoin hitting about $65,000, $64,000. Um, so what we see more people will be in adventure, putting money in different assets. Now, mm. in times like this, when um, there's not a lot of money to throw, go around, inflation is up, you want you see more people trying to hold cash, trying to invest in safer assets. And mm. what does happen is that you'd see people moving money from not just in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, even in stock markets as well, moving that money that they have into safer assets, into maybe government bonds. That's why you see in the past couple of months, you say, okay, the US has increased uh, their, tre their treasury bond rates. Same thing in Nigeria as well, because they want more people to be able to put money. In that. So there's a lot more money in the economy. Uh, there's, and then you're trying to push that, reduce the uh, amount of money. So one is people saying the cost of stuff is going up, yeah? Um, this asset I'm holding is risky. Can I move that to a safer asset where I'm sure that I would get maybe 2 or 3% annual returns versus putting it in cryptocurrency where uh, it's not too guaranteed and it's risky. So what, we, what we've seen is more people just trying to sell off their assets. Yes, use Tesla, for example. I think last month or so, they sold off some of their Bitcoin. One of the reasons why they sold their Bitcoin was that obviously their stock prices had dropped uh, compared to how the growth that's seen in the past one year. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to be able to hold more cash. And what that proves is that for them to be able to sell Bitcoin as quickly as they could, as they did, it means it shows how liquid that Bitcoin is. So mm -hmm. on one ex aspect, you expect, you say, oh, um, why is the price of Bitcoin tanking? It's expected because everybody is holding those kind of assets and they want to sell to hold cash. Mm. And that's why we are seeing what we are seeing. Mm. So essentially, there were a lot of sell-offs. Yes, there was a lot of sell-offs. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of things that happened in the market as well with some crypto companies that affected the whole market as well. Um, <laughs> Um, Celsius and then what's it called? US um, Luna. Luna as well. It affected the market as well. But um, I think... Again, back to what you said, we are 
an emerging technology. Mm -hmm. uh, things are bound to be volatile in the first uh, couple of years. And then with time, we'll see it more stable and um, we'll see more growth. Mm. Okay. That's, that's an interesting one. And funny you should mention how liquid Bitcoin is, but I'm now thinking about Africa okay. and Nigeria. So, but before we even start talking about all the whole issues with crypto and all of mm -hmm. that, let's even veer off a bit on a tangent. Like, Africa is mostly known to be a consumer of products, consumer of services. We are the ones that buy the pom vitas, the milos. We're not probably not the ones that produce them, <laughs> right? And the same thing with most of these te digital technologies, right? Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. We are all like the kings of using those platforms yeah. but how many of them have we produced so now blockchain is like this opportunity that africans should have to leapfrog to start building an infrastructure but it seems google trends and being crypto curious and being trade um very, very very good traders of crypto that's what we've been known for so far so good mm -hmm. so what's happening on the infrastructure front blockchain in africa Okay, uh, so what we've seen is there are more companies that are trying to build out um, interesting projects. So even for instance, the Kodak's API. So what we did was first of all, to build an API to help people to connect our exchange and build an interesting product. So we've seen been, seen people be able to create savings products with the Kodak's API, save asset management products, and um, as well as remittance products with the API. So while we say Africa is a, a consumer uh, continent, um, I think it's a matter of Blockchain or cryptocurrency gives us the opportunity to turn the tide. Um, it means that we can go ahead and be on the same 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 way the guy in Europe is or the US is. We can take that advantage back to um, take that advantage, but it requires some of that investment. Uh, it requires uh, being able to build out a team, and sometimes that's hard. Um, so what we are doing from our end, first of all, is being able to ensure one, for instance, Kodak's API, making it easy for anybody to access that API. Um, two is going to go back to invest in people. Um, and we'll be seeing a lot of more, we got more of that from the Kodak side of things in a couple of months. Mm. Um, but for that to have, for all of this to happen, um, first of all, as I said, it starts with people. Being able to that educate people and then being able to show people these are the products that we have, not just Quidax, but other crypto companies, other blockchain companies. Mm. This is what we are doing to invest in the space. And that is why, most importantly, regulation is also key to be able to ensure that while you are building out, you are not trying to um, fight, um, what I say, mm. shadows. Mm. Interesting. So, but how are you thinking about use cases apart from crypto? Mm -hmm. is, um, is there anything Quidax is doing related to that? So, for us right now, it's mostly cryptocurrency, but we see companies building it in terms of the blockchain space, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the supply chain, for instance, when you buy a product, say, from uh, from the farm, being able to track it from all the way from the farm down to when it gets to the to the factory as well. Mm -hmm. And then consumer can see, oh, this is where, this is what happened. This is where this um, ingredients came from and all of that stuff. So we see a bit of that happening there. We see a bit of that happening also in, in, um, in houses as well, being able to track um purchase of houses and land on the blockchain space okay so there's some of that coming up um again it looks like there's someone that says something about how um right now where we are at is in the stage of of creation and most of the people that would engage with it are mostly the engineers that would see that mm -hmm. i don't expect just like a car for instance i don't expect um someone to be able to open their bonnets and be able to start fixing stuff in their car. Mm. Not that, not that many will happen. And that's mm -hmm. where we are at right now. So until we get to the stage where you see the finished car, all you have to do is just ride in, step into your car and ride and get to your destination. Mm. You get That's where we're heading. But today, that's not where we are at. We are still in the building stage. And a lot of what you see right now still seems, that's why sometimes it's hard for people to understand some of what is happening today. Mm. But when we get to that stage, you get, mm. we would see a lot of that. Where we are at right now is where the internet was 20 years ago. Because people could not understand what do I use the internet for? What's the meaning of all of this? But right now, internet the internet has changed the way we communicate. The blockchain on the crypto side, crypto is changing the way we think out and view about money. The blockchain is changing different parts of the society today, whether it's government, whether it's um, supply chain, whether it's even in business as well. 
to get it to take some time but we are heading there and um in probably about five years at maximum we will definitely start to see all the work that has been put into it mm. okay so yeah the, uh, okay go, go on all right so i just have a follow-up on what you said about you know where we are at right now when it comes to cryptocurrencies and coincidentally i was just having a conversation with someone recently and and we're talking about you know things innovations we've seen in the space blockchain and crypto space so far in terms of nfts defi things like that and the the, the what's what what you know jumped out at me during that conversation was the fact that you know the person not really a not really someone that knows a lot about the space per se but the person was like you know to get to a stage where a lot of the things we are seeing now uh in the crypto and blockchain space will no longer exist like you know the level of uh, speculation that we have with crypto now uh nfts will no longer be a thing and then when the real use case now comes you know crypto trading all those things they will fade away and you know when you think about it like that you start thinking about the future of you know crypto companies like Qdax and you know a lot of other ones uh, how do you feel about you know this <laughs> so for instance there are definitely use case as of today mm-hmm. in terms of the simplest use case for bitcoin is being able to move money as quickly as possible you mm-hmm. can move money from nigeria to uruguay in under one hour mm-hmm. because that's like, the biggest use case and that's one reason why bitcoin was created yeah but beyond things being um moving away we could say the same thing for every single technology where we are when social media started is not the way we are today we had a number of social media uh, companies back in the day that started with Facebook uh, and all of that. All of those mm-hmm. guys have faded away. Yeah. You just see a few of them that are there mm-hmm. today. So what you see is uh, we would evolve. True. Okay. So some of what you see today in crypto would not necessarily die out, but you need certain technologies to come and then you build better and you build stronger. And that's what we are seeing. So 10 years from now, would certain cryptocurrencies that we see as the top 100 still exist? Maybe not. However, if those technologies had not come, we would not get to where we are supposed to be. Um, that's on one end. So speaking about, for instance, NFTs, um, the way people engage with NFTs today would definitely change in a couple hmm. of years, especially when we talk about the metaverse. Um, the way I see it, there's this um, damn movie about uh, the metaverse. Ready that player one. That is the <laughs> very, that's the big, biggest example of yeah. what the metaverse looks like. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, those NFTs that you buy today, those are NFTs that you use in the metaverse. Mm. You get so you go say you buy a T-shirt, you get and you think oh, right now it looks like it's just a T-shirt. Why in heaven's name would you spend so much money on a T-shirt? But mm. if you go into the metaverse, maybe you're the only one that has that T-shirt, mm. or you buy a house in the metaverse. And as time goes on, a lot of people will probably spend more time in the metaverse than they are spending here in fiscal. Is that a good um, thing? <laughs> it, it, depends on the way you see it. it depends on the way you see it because that way communication is much easier i can be talking to someone from the us and right there in the metaverse we don't mm-hmm. have to worry about this this thing, this we have this thing we're having right now could happen in the metaverse mm. we don't have to have it physically to get so again you could say it's a bad thing there's a but negative side to it but there's a good side to it mm. um so that, that, that's the consideration for it. But the way I see it is that um, the world would always evolve. The world will always change. And it is always to get a better version of it. And it's always better, always to make things easier for people. And that's where we are heading. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting one. So, <laughs> the, yeah, the world will always evolve and mm. things will always change. And apparently, things are changing in the space of government. And, yeah, at this point... I think this is the perfect time to introduce you to our sponsor, Whistle App. And what they're doing is, I've never seen anything like it, honestly. Trust me, I've not seen anything like it. But, okay, I have. No, don't let me <laughs> lie. <laughs> I have. But what's so special about it is you get rewarded for using this service. Now, let me tell you what happens. You know this whole thing with Lagos traffic where people, many, many things happen at the same time then drivers take matters into their own hand. There's traffic jam. Then you start seeing some drivers climbing the sidewalk, moving. Then when there's traffic on one lane, they start entering one way and all of that. All those messed up things that happens in Lagos traffic. Do you know that Whistle app is building something that you can use to change all that? All you just need to do is to report a driver driving nonsense and you get paid for it. 
you report a driver driving nonsense, a vehicle that should be in the mortuary is still on the road, mm. but nobody says anything and no one uh, holds the, uh, that driver accountable. You should be able to report that driver. So with the whistle app, you just need to take a photo or a video of that activity that the driver is doing or that horri- horrible looking vehicle. And uh, yes, and you upload it on the app and you get paid. Please don't go and start uploading <laughs> pictures of people that park their cars or vehicles in their houses or offices. But as long as the person is driving dangerously, is using a very, very, very unsafe vehicle, or there's a traffic congestion on the way and you think uh, the police or the last mile, uh, Lagos State uh, Traffic Management Agency should come there and maybe clear things up, then Whistle App is the platform for you. And if you're curious about this, just quickly go and get it on Google Play Store. Uh, Apple users, don't be annoyed, don't cry. Uh, it will soon be available on the Apple Store. So just just check it out, Whistle App. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was weird, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I will take it. So uh, why I said I haven't seen anything like that, I'm thinking this is, the channels has this thing called the channels eyewitness report okay. where you can report things happening live or negative things or positive things. Mm-hmm. So if there's a crime going on and now we're seeing it, we're seeing a use case in the traffic. So I'm thinking, could there be a use case like this for in the blockchain? Like can blockchain help out with our mm. traffic issues Interesting. in Lagos? Can blockchain help out with very, very poor vehicles, people using fake, uh, vehicle papers to whether it's vehicle papers, roadworthiness, it doesn't enter the road like that. So, my people, help me <laughs> out here. Can blockchain help out? <laughs> so, okay. um, at the basic level, mm. the blockchain is simply a ledger. It's a book to record stuff. That's what it is. So, if it's for instance people that have getting driver's license number you want to record all of that the blockchain can do that so it's in a mm. space where everybody can do it and anybody can go and check um transactions so maybe that might be a private blockchain maybe the state government can go and commission and say okay i want to create a private blockchain for you to see all of that that's possible mm. yeah, but at the end of the day as i said it's simply a, a, a book you could think of it a digital book where every single people every single person has maybe registered their car their names are there you can find out who they are and what their details are of that again why i say it's going to be a private blockchain is because you don't want that kind of data open to the public True. probably just be governments that would have that kind of um um that kind of access to that kind of data mm. so driver's license road worthiness everything all yeah. of that all of that can sit on the blockchain I, ca- I can also think of another use case okay in terms of you know people getting paid for reporting those things i think mm. Uh, maybe Ezekiel can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I also think there's a use case for smart contracts in that case where you upload it and then there's probably some kind of mechanism that checks how valid that information mm. is and automatically pays you where no one really needs to be the one to, to confirm. do the transfer mm. or do anything or you still have to call in, I have not seen my money. Mm. Like smart contracts could just automate that. Yeah, smart contracts can help. But maybe to some extent, for for starters, maybe you need to so probably to manually verify the data. For instance, mm. the picture that Emmanuel sent to me is it <laughs> actually um, a car that um, should be parked on the road or whatever it is. Mm. Um, someone might have to do that manually. Okay. Uh, but as time goes on, when AI uh, becomes, we see more adoption and um, it comes. It's no, it's easier to access or cheaper to access. Mm. Um, you will just see maybe AI will just be able to run through that picture, that video to access to see, okay, is that the, does that make sense? Does this work? And then you can just say, okay, once it's checked, um, maybe send it to authorities. Okay, go and find that government, that vehicle and uh, build the vehicle. Uh, mm-hmm. And then automatically pay uh, Bruno or Emmanuel. Hmm. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. Possible. That's interesting. So, now you, you mentioned some really, really interesting points that the government could commission a private blockchain mm. and we've had the government commission a private blockchain for something else in recent years so it's having me thinking about nigeria's crypto market specifically now as regarding regulations i've heard you mention that before so uh how considering the whole regulatory space and the whole beer market mm. 
how you how would you say Quidax is navigating this this that peculiar space because it's one thing for crypto to be having a bear market and it's another thing for you to have a hostile regulatory environment relatively hostile mm. or seemingly hostile maybe you can help us clear that up okay um so immediately after i guess you're also talking about since what happened last year february um <laughs> so yeah that was that was a bit rough but but the thing is this since since yeah. that happened we've had several conversations with um other players in the industry we've also had conversations with um people in the regulatory yeah. space from the securities and exchange commission and uh, even to cbn as well and i think all the conversations we've had is that oh we should one of the key people yeah. that's supposed to regulate cryptocurrency is the sec and that's why we've had interesting conversations with them and that's why we saw about last month or two months ago why the regulation came out because as a result of conversations with different players in the space do you get so what happened last year was i think they it's saw something and they just tried to to reduce risk to people which is understandable because mm. at the end of the day if anything happens, happens to people's funds who would you go to you'd go to your cbn or you go to an sec there was no way for them to hold on to anybody so what obviously affected us and of uh, other other people in the space i could understand where they're coming from and um we expect that with continuous conversations and with the regulation that they've um the policy that they used about two months ago we should see um um a better position between players of the space and regulators be able to understand why are we what are we doing and ensuring that everybody is uh, playing fair uh, to avoid coming people coming and saying oh i invested this money and it's disappeared they get so regulation will definitely help that and we believe that with more regulation adoption of cryptocurrencies would increase because some people that i even know today would tell me oh they don't want to buy bitcoin or they don't want to buy any cryptocurrency because they don't understand it and they don't know who who to hold if anything happens because so we are definitely open to regulation and i think it's very important for the space to move beyond where it is at certain points we definitely need regulation however we need regulation to be able to partner with them as opposed to them being um a a police anti <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting way to put it <laughs> yes but um i also want to know exactly how that you know uh, when the cbn uh, released that circular last year i want to know exactly how it affected you know i've not really heard a lot of crypto companies talk about how it really affected them like what did it do how were they able to you know like keep surviving essentially mm-hmm. after that so what what did that really do to uh, credax okay so what we saw was Interesting enough, it brought a lot more people to sign up for Quidax at the time. Interesting. Because people were curious. Because if you didn't even, you probably didn't know about something, you're now curious, oh, what are these guys? Why are you <laughs> trying to ban this thing? So on one level, we saw a lot more people trying to sign up on Quidax at that point. Um, also, it affected the ways we could deposit and withdraw Naira. That was uh, the biggest way. It wasn't that, that cryptocurrency was banned. It simply means that on a normal day, instead of going to your bank app and just sending money to Quidax to deposit um, money to Naira wallet, it became harder. Mm. Uh, so what for us that did was that it forced us to have to be more innovative in the time in that time period, in the very short period that we had. Because in that period, we had to come up with like, two different products to get people to be able to deposit and withdraw Naira. Uh, it was tough for people, for the engineers on our team and product managers. But we were able to get that to ensure that that product was running. And since that time, we've also brought out another product as well. Um, so that's how we affected us on one end in terms of more signups, in terms of um, having to come out, um, see. And then I think one of the other considerations then was we began to ask ourselves, um, how else do we also reduce our risk in, in the Nigerian market? To ensure that oh we are not just focused on one market okay what else can we do across other markets as well and i think that got us thinking too and um it began to help us approach risk a bit differently um so it was interesting for us um it had good the good side of it and it had the bad side to it but i think everything at the end of the day drives drives us one step forward um um maybe one step backward as well mm. but um the way we see it is um progress is going to happen and um we believe that if you continue working with your creators we would see what we want at the end of the day we don't see that as enemies we see them as people we need to partner with so True. funny you should mention reducing risk I, I think i learned that another crypto company 
moved their, head, uh, their headquarters out of Nigeria mm. during that period. Mm. So is that something you've explored or how have you been able to consolidate your presence in any other market apart from Nigeria? Um, so when I say risk is beyond just the retail side of this, we said you can ask, okay, what else can we do um, from that end? And then also other markets. So we try to do, we work, so the way Quidax is built today, anybody, anywhere in the world can use Quidax. Mm. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily be a Nigerian. Someone in from Australia can bring in Bitcoin and trade their Bitcoin on Quidax and move out that money. So we're going to see it's from those side of things. How do we increase uh, people trading from other countries as opposed to just being focused on one market? And then there are plans also to be able to launch in other African markets as well. We have about three or four markets that we have plans to launch in um, over the next um, one year as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's um, that's one of the things that we... Any, we, any spoilers we for our audience? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. So when that time comes, I'll definitely get you know. Mm, three to four markets. Yeah, All markets. African or even All outside African, African. African markets. African markets. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. No, let's, let's, let's leave it there. But you also mentioned something about... Um, having conversations with the SEC and the CBN. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I feel, especially when it comes to the CBN, this current dispensation. Yeah. I, I feel a little bit cautious because it's always seems as if this is not the first time I'm hearing crypto uh, founders saying they're talking to CBN. And it always seems like, okay, whatever happens in that, that meeting does not really matter. They will still do what they want to do. So. How is this dialogue really, really going? Like, what's what's really going with this dialogue? So the first stage of the dialogue was yeah. the SEC regulation that you saw. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. That was why you saw what you saw. So we, it, okay. it's definitely, again, a lot of things happen back door um, or behind the scenes. And it would take a while for it to show. Do you get? But by the time it does show, everybody will begin to see what's been happening. Uh, because it's not just the, the regulators are trying to look at it from that point of view. How do they protect the man on the streets? And we, as our sales representative, how do we ensure that we achieve what we want to achieve, make this, making money to move easier mm. and faster? And in some cases, make it easier for people to access um, to grow their wealth. Yeah. Um, so, where we are at is a stage of conversations. Those conversations will take time. Yeah, but I think what I can tell people is that continuous, um, that's why up to today, that's why we had to find ways for people to do what they need to do on Quidax. Do you get so there's that end. But what I would tell people is that stay, I would say to be patient um, mm. because those regulations will come through. Those conversations, we sort of all that conversation, people begin to see that impact. It might take longer than we, exp- than we think it will, but it will definitely come true. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, but yeah, it's interesting that you know you brought up the SEC, the recent guidelines that the SEC released, and you know, seeing that guideline, I would say you know you are right about those conversations yielding positive results. But however, there are some <laughs> specific parts of that guideline that I still uh, was still trying to wrap my head around and say, okay, how does this really benefit everybody, anybody? And that's the part about um, CEOs of crypto companies retiring after a certain period of time. Like, mm. how, how, yeah, we'll how looking, does this work? Just we'll looking at your founders, like, okay, <laughs> you, know, let me, let me you, <laughs> that you just look at your founders, yeah, you just have five years, don't worry. <laughs> so, um, but you know, it, strangely enough, it's not just it's not just the crypto. There are other com- there are other industries where you see some kind of changes. There's a okay. number of years that people can see. So I think mm. in public companies, um, your auditors can spend more than a period. A certain set of auditors can spend more than a period auditing your books. You have to switch. I think after is it two years or three years? I'm not sure mm. how what those things are. So I think what they just try to do is apply um, your operations from different parts. To see which ones are the best. Um, again, some of these things will change. Okay. Get, but that's where we, what we have right now, we are thankful for what we have because mm. that's a big step forward. True. Get, um, whether that could change two or three years from now, um, I'm not sure. But it's what we have. And we'll take what we have right now and see what maybe we can change in two or three years. But we're happy for the five. If they say it's five years, so we'll take the five years. But maybe that could change in two or three years from now. True. But at least we are beginning to see progress. Mm. Interesting. 
So let's let's just um, let me just get a feel of what you think about the entire guidelines generally. You know, the SEC guidelines. You know, looking through it, like I said, it seems like you know those conversations you yeah. spoke about. You know, that are happening behind closed doors are uh, yielding positive results. But what what is it that really uh, that you feel about the whole guideline? How do how, how what response have you seen from um, people at Quidax or at other crypto companies? What would you say the you know how, how, how was how was it received? It wasn't surprising because we, as I said, there were discussions oh, okay. uh, behind the scenes, so it wasn't it wasn't a shock or a surprise mm. because. Uh, in some way or the other, we are part of those discussions. So, um, what we've seen is just, I think right now where we are, it's just being to ensure that so we are uh, in the pace whereby we can get regulated. We get based mm. on the regulations that have come out. Um, it wasn't a shock, we expected it. And for us, we're just happy that it's coming out so that so we can at least ensure that we are moving forward. Um, and at least the people, at the end of the day, it's the people that matter, the people that want to use those products. Do you get? And then if it helps them to use our product, to use the products that have been built for them, fantastic that works for us mm, so but there's a very very big question around because in nigeria it seems two conflicting laws can exist at the same time and two conflicting regulations can exist at the same time mm-hmm. how does the sec regulations live in the same space with the cbn's ban mm-hmm. on financial institutions saying don't trade or process crypto because we're talking no. about a capital market here right yeah. so the sec has recognized crypto as an asset class but we're still seeing the CBN not budging on just stance. Even yeah. so far as if you put a remark on your transfer and there's anything crypto related, it gets flagged. Yeah. So, yes, on the one hand, you want the capital market regulator to recognize crypto as an asset class. But if the financial institutions that have a direct relationship to that capital market still can processes, then the whole widespread adoption we're trying to uh, uh, bring forward, the whole trust we're trying to move. How do these two sit side by side? Is that's <laughs> what's confusing me, honestly? Again, it's it's the con- in the conversations. Mm. Yeah, SEC has said this is what you need to know. The next step is go back and say, okay, SEC, we've met all the regulations that SEC had said. CBN, what's the next step? What do we need to do to ensure that? Our banks can bank us. Can we go to a GT bank today and say, okay, please yes, open a corporate bank account and all of that stuff, and people won't have any issues? Do you get again? It, it's, it sounds like I'm saying over and the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. to be honest, that's where we're at. Until we have those conversations, on, until they're able to see this is why what we are doing, this is how we impact the economy, this impacts the everyday people, um, we wouldn't see a change. So, yes, that it seems like there are two conflicting. Um, your questions, but there are conversations that have been had around that, and that would help guide us down the road we want to see, mm. want to be at. Okay, so apparently there's no perfect way to see this. We just have to be taking it one step at a time, man. We'll take it one step exactly. at a time. Yeah, and I think it makes sense because it's like you said, it's a technology that is still it's, it's still developing, it's, it's still emerging, and you know. Um, regulators, you know, regulators and stakeholders will sometimes clash, sometimes they'll make headway. And I think if these conversations continue, like you said, uh, you know, we can always look look forward, look forward to mm. positive, <laughs> positive outcomes. Now, now a talking point I always drag Bolu for is mm-hmm. the whole lot of scams that always happen. And Okay, I said I reduced my level of skepticism about the whole thing because when I saw that the crypto market is still actually learning yeah. when it comes to crime. Yeah. So, but, babies. Yeah, you guys are babies. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole crypto scam thing, I mean, I think we should talk about it. Uh, how do you avoid things like that? Ponzi schemes. What are those things you should look out for? That would probably be red flags. Yeah in any crypto investment you want to make. It could be an NFT, it could be a crypto exchange, it could be a token yeah. of a company. So yeah, what what advice do you have on that on that regard? Okay. Um first things first. Mm-hmm. Don't 
invest more than <laughs> you can afford to use that's yeah. everybody says that but mm-hmm. to be honest it is it what it is it is what it is um you need to be able to understand what your risk level is and be able to say how much can i really afford or put aside to be able to say i want to invest in this for some people it could be 1000 naira for some people it could be 50000 naira for some people it be 200000 naira understand what it is that it is for what it is for you for some people maybe 1000 a month is what you put in it that's fine that's on one end the second end is doing your research trying to understand different cryptocurrencies and why they are created for some of these scams they have very good research yeah, i don't so <laughs> again that's why you try to reduce the amount of risk that you have mm. and then also not just in investment in general there's all there's also what we call diversification so beyond diversifying into other assets beyond bitcoin cryptocurrency you can divide diversify across different cryptocurrencies today do you get so for me today i hold about probably about 10 different cryptocurrencies at least 10 different cryptocurrencies spread across the different cryptocurrencies and what i've said to myself is what are the cryptocurrencies i trust the most Bitcoin is one of them. Ethereum is one of them, and a bunch of the other ones. Okay, so, I would put my I have in quote a portfolio classification that allows me to say, okay, how much do I want to put in this? How much do I want to put in that? To ensure that, at no matter what, at any point in time, I am not. Um, I'm trying not to use a big term here. I am mm-hmm. not too exposed on one cryptocurrency, and then mm-hmm. even entire in terms of investment generally, I'm not too ex- exposed in cryptocurrency diversify across different um investments as well okay so, yeah, yeah that, uh, you know that's that, that's and then i think sorry okay. just one more thing okay. is just not being um being taking your time out before doing an investment meaning that sometimes you just see oh if you invest in this you see 100k or <laughs> invest then you get 100k there's that quick uh your adrenaline is running mm-hmm. and you want to invest as quick as possible the that extra five ten minutes i would take just just sit down and calm down and just look at that research can make a difference in, in between mm. um getting scammed or not mm. sometimes all those people that message you on maybe twitter or telegram sometimes you see some accounts that say oh tweet uh, send so and so ethereum to this person's account and they'll send you back uh 50 ethereum if you sit down and ask yourself is why is this person asking me to send 20 ethereum for them to send me 100 ethereum why they doesn't they wouldn't just at this mm. if they are nice they should just send you the hundred ethereum mm. why would they ask you to send 20 ethereum mm-hmm. so if you just sit down and ask five times or even ask a friend do you get sometimes that makes a difference mm. but sometimes we don't want to ask a friend because we also want to be the one to chop out of it and we don't mm-hmm. want to tell anybody mm-hmm. else but those five ten minutes can make a difference yeah funny you should mention send 20 ethereum to collect 100 ethereum some of them say they were able to trade and when it grows yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah one one of them stole my rent money <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can understand what you mean so I, that's one of the things that we do always say as much as possible try to uh, that's why kodak is open anybody can buy and sell your own so don't try to give somebody else on your behalf because mm. it's easy kodak, we've made it very easy for you to use kodak to buy and sell any cryptocurrency you want on kodak today so you don't have to depend on anybody else to trade on your behalf mm yeah so inter- interesting points you've you made but you know for someone that has been just like your mom was not rent money <laughs> <laughs> i don't see why your mother is always dragging me uh. <laughs> <laughs> i can't return your rent money now <laughs> yeah but the, the, the thing is you know looking at you know cryptocurrencies that you can trust you know it's good but uh the funny thing is uh, the ones that that seem to give you the best returns <laughs> are not the ones that are really <laughs> trustworthy you know you, those ones that you just uh see on groups here and there you just find them and you know they'll send you the smart <laughs> contract <laughs> address everybody's with everybody's looking for 10x exactly so i want to put 1000 around and get 10 times the 1000 exactly I, i'm also looking for it <laughs> but the honest truth is i have to be very cautious mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. The, the, the thing is this yeah um how how are you going to feel are you going to feel um oh, when you miss an opportunity mm. do you feel bad that you missed the opportunity versus when you lost money mm. Mm. that that question is hard to answer because <laughs> because on one hand mm-hmm. I, i i really wanted i would I, i would you know i don't want that feeling of what if i had done it yeah you know it's like you see there's an opportunity for you to like say get better at something 
or probably just even start you know a new career or try your hands at something new and you're like uh, i might not really be good at, be good at this but then you might look at look back at it three years later i'm like what if what if i tried i, I guess maybe that logic doesn't work you know when we talk about cryptocurrency because when you want to invest in something and you know you look back and you hear that everybody that put their money, <laughs> someone has rock pulled them or someone has yeah. scammed them. So I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer. I mean, no, so I, 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 it's a very, very straight question. Losing the money is more painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's more painful than wondering, oh, had I known, I should have known. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I got to know about Bitcoin during mm. I was in, I was still in school then and I could have bought Bitcoin then. It was... Was not up to it. it was no more than a thousand dollars then but right now i don't regret it not buying bitcoin then because you probably would have sold it i would have sold it probably when the market crash of 2018 happened True. i would have been crying because if i would have bought bitcoin in 2016 with my students my broke ass Almost. self in 2016, <laughs> and that crash happened how would i have survived 2018 and all of that so maybe my mental i mean my rent money is still paying me to now, Sha, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the feeling of losing money, like why did I invest in yeah. something like this? Thinking about it, it doesn't even make sense. I put how much? Thirty thousand, forty thousand naira, and you are promising me twenty percent returns or thirty percent returns a week in a month. That's that's 120 percent returns I'm, I'm thinking about it like what's wrong with you emmanuel so yes i guess the feeling of why did i not think twice like you mm. said why did i not go back and really really think about what i'm about to do because this money is very hard to come by mm. really in a market like nigeria so yeah let's 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 leave this topic, <laughs> <laughs> leave this topic. okay but yeah thanks for making us introspect here yeah. at this point but yeah a lighter note yeah on a on, yes on a lighter note so um you know it's i guess it's not news that you know quidax is one of the sponsors for the um big brother niger show i think one of the biggest i think it's one of the biggest shows right now on in in the country so you it's know you super story but <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah you, you hear people say a lot of things about crypto companies being unbelievably rich that they have so much money you know and then you see you know quidax do something like this you know we just spoke about crypto winter that you know the market is not exactly doing it and you know quidax is doing uh sponsoring uh, big brother niger so is it true what they say are you people <laughs> very very rich <laughs> no it's not true what they say at least from my own point of view okay but so i should not um, tell people to be you when they meet you on the room no please <laughs> they shouldn't be me um but the thing is, we, we decided to sponsor Big Brother even before the the winter came. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that was the decision that we had made, and even um when that came, we decided okay, we'll still go ahead to sponsor because in the times that we are right now, we still need to educate people about cryptocurrency. We need to still show them that yeah, you can still trade cryptocurrency on Kodaks. And um, if we if you don't do that, people will be still asking questions that they wouldn't know. Hmm. You get so we had to answer the question and say yes, uh, you can still trade crypto on Kodak. So it's not about whether we have tons of money now. <laughs> no, it's, it's not about that. It's simply about um, where we know where we know where we are heading, and we have to make the right decisions right now because the decision that we make now can affect um, people years from now, and that's why we decided to just go ahead. Yeah, crypto winter or not, we still need to use this opportunity that we've been given. Mm. Bold statement. I, I think the market is ripe enough to accept the message you're sending, considering everything that's going on. Yes, um, you believe it is. For some of for um, the objective isn't just for them to just sign up and, and, and buy crypto. There's also the objective of them educating them as well. You get we have an academy that we created uh, a couple of months ago and we're also going to be driving that through bbn as well to get people to understand and why they should use cryptocurrency so an academy and, uh, yes, we an like academy a school or an online course, uh, online course. Yeah, it takes about 10 minutes uh, for people to start and finish um mm. five five videos um for people to just understand what cryptocurrency is and why they should buy cryptocurrency and that's why we created it 
period. Um, okay. So yeah, we see it as an opportunity to educate people. Um, obviously, we also want to get people to sign up. But at the end of the day, the core is to address people to understand that cryptocurrency is it's not a scam. We're not trying to, um, what's the word, separate people from their money. We're trying to help people. And we're trying to build, um, we're trying to, um, we're trying to build the future. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's an interesting one. Uh Bibi Ninja has always been a show that's very, very intriguing. Mm. Uh, I like to see some research re- behind the whole concept of uh Big, Big Brother housemates together and yeah. yeah I, I actually I actually applaud the decision to go the Bibi Ninja route because it gives you a very, very wide audience to mm. talk to. Mm. Yeah, that's as interesting one. Did that did I miss anything? No, no, nothing. Yeah, just did you see? Did you see, did you see it? The the I think it was the Quidax games, right? Yeah, uh, Quidax games. Quidax games. <laughs> it happened last week Thursday. Did last week Thursday. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't. Well, see I didn't see it. We have another task coming in um in a couple of weeks, so you mm. can watch out for that one. That would be more interesting. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. So that's to our fans now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Fans. I, can't, I can't. Okay, yeah. If you're a BB Ninja <laughs> fan, yes, watch out for because I was you about to record. You don't necessarily have to be a BB Ninja fan, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know how I feel about recommending people to go and watch Ruby Ninja when, <laughs> when I don't know if I want to watch Ruby Ninja. Maybe I will watch it because of Quidax too. But yes, please, you can do because that. Because of Quidax. Yes, please. Okay, so guys, it's been an interesting one, and I hope you had fun in this discussion. This is this. It's been an interesting, and let us know. It's been an interesting conversation, and also let us know what you think about all everything we talked about today from the crypto winter stock market crashes crypto regulations and use cases for blockchain outside of cryptocurrency and of course cryptocurrency trading in particular i think that is the main main culprit in the whole crypto conversation and yeah thanks for having us here or thanks for coming thank you so much for having me yeah so wherever you see this podcast on youtube instagram TikTok, and of course the ogs bolu yes Oh, you mean my signature? You, you, the OGs <laughs> now, yeah, you know them. All right, yes, you can always find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Hi Art Radio, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Yeah, yeah, that was a little muted. It's cold, don't worry. <laughs> yes, it's very cold, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a very, very cold winter. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, of course, you heard about Quidax, you heard about Wisu, and of course, you heard about the Tech Point business team. I know, check them out and uh, have a lovely winter.